Hi, everyone. This is Professor Mani. Today we're in my lab from Pearson Publishing. Let's do a problem to learn how to do a hypothesis test using a Z test. So let's go ahead and read the problem. It says cadmium, a heavy metal, is toxic to animals. Mushrooms, however, are able to absorb and accumulate cadmium at high concentrations. The government set a safety limit for cadmium and dry vegetables at 0.5 parts per million. The cadmium levels in a random sample of one species of edible mushrooms are in the accompanying data set. At the 5% significance level, so that's our first thing that we need to talk about. This 5% significance level, that's alpha. So alpha 0.05. Do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean cadmium level in, in this species of mushrooms is greater than the government's recommended limit of 0.5 parts per million? So here's the question. Is the mean cadmium level greater than the government's recommended level of 0.5 parts per million? Remember, the question is always the alternative hypothesis. So when we set this up, we set up the null hypothesis where we have to assume that the population mean mu is equal to that 0.5 parts per million. And then what we'll test is the alternative hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is that the population mean mu is greater than 0.5 parts per million. So let's just go ahead and get that entered in to get us started. So we've got mu equals, remember the null hypothesis always includes an equal sign. The alternative will have a not equal or a greater or a less than. In this case, obviously it's the greater than. And notice you can put this in as 0.5 or you can just put it as 0.5, it doesn't matter. We'll go ahead and check that. All right, so we're good there. Let's go ahead and erase this. Now, it says assume the population standard deviation. Well, population standard deviation, now this is important as well. Population standard deviation, that's sigma of the species of mushrooms is 0 0.36 parts per million. The reason this is a Z test and not a T test is because I have the population standard deviation sigma. If I didn't have sigma, it would be a T test. That's the only difference in those two tests as far as when we use which test. It says preliminary data analyses indicate that applying the Z test is reasonable. Remember the assumptions there. So it was a simple random sample. The data was either from a normally distributed or a bell-shaped population, or we have a large sample size of at least 30. When we click on this data set, we see, oh, we only have 12 data pieces. So it's not a large data set. So it has to be the case that it was normally distributed population. Otherwise, we couldn't do the Z test. So we click here to open it up in StatCrunch. It comes right up for us, and here's how we run the test. We go to stat, Z stats, one sample with data. The data is in variable one, so pick that. The standard deviation, 0 0.36. Now here we're, here's, you have to be careful because it says it's optional. If you don't put the population standard deviation there, it's going to calculate the sample standard deviation, put it in itself, and you're going to get the wrong answer. And that's all we need to do. We come down here to where it says hypothesis test. Well, we're testing to see if mu was equal to 0.5 or greater than 0.5. So we do have to make sure our null and alternative hypotheses are correct. But then we just compute. And what I'm getting from here are two things. I'm getting the Z value here, it says Z stat, and the p-value. Now, the Z stat we really don't need since we're using the p-value approach. We're going to do it just because they specifically ask for it. Now, I will tell you, the p-value comes from the Z statistics, so it has to be calculated. And I, I believe they go to two decimal places. If not, we'll just remember it was 0.369. And then the p-value, we'll write that down also so that we can see it when we get rid of this. 0 0.6, I believe they go to three decimal places. We'll go four, th four. And we'll try to remember that's four, three, nine in case we need to. Okay, so let's just drop this down so we can get back to the problem. All right, we don't need that anymore. The z-value to two decimal places, negative 0.37. 
And notice I usually don't put the Z in front. And then the p-value was 0.644. All right, now here's what we do. Here's how we get to the conclusion of our test. We take that p-value and we compare it to the significance level. We want to know if that's less than or equal to 0 0.05, which was my significance level alpha. Clearly, that's not less than 0 0.05, because that's 64.4%, not less than or equal to 5%. So that's not less than or equal to. So we say, do not reject the null hypothesis. And I've got a video on p-value, if you want to look at that to get in mind what the p-value is. But essentially, p-value, that's the probability we would get our sample results or something more extreme if the null hypothesis were true. Well, our cutoff, our significance level says, hey, I'm only going to reject that the null hypothesis is true if I get a value, a probability of that value being 5% or less. I didn't get 5% or less, so it says the null hypothesis might be true. So I can't reject it. And so the answer to the question when it says, are the cadmium levels greater than the government's recommended limit of 0.5 parts per million? I have to say no. The data is not sufficient. to show whatever the alternative hypothesis is, in this case, that mu is greater than 0 0.5 parts per million. And notice up here where we say, do not reject the null hypothesis. That first part where we decided to reject or not reject, the decision is always based on the null hypothesis. The conclusion answering the question is always based on the alternative hypothesis. So that's why we, the first one we word in terms of the null hypothesis, and the second one we word in terms of the alternative hypothesis. Now, do bear in mind this is a comma right here. It looks almost like an R, but that was no comma. The data is not sufficient to show mu is greater than 0 0.5 parts per million. And so that's what we state here. Do not reject the null hypothesis. At the 5% significance level, the data do not provide sufficient evidence to conclude that the mean cadmium level is more than the government's recommended limit. And that's essentially it. So do practice this, it'll come to you. Um, and it's actually not terribly horrible. So good luck to you on that. And we will talk more later.